next case is a female patient in her 50s with a colonic lesion at the rectal sigmoid junction. The screening colonoscopy revealed laterally spreading tumor, which is approximately 30 millimeter in size. The colonic ESD will be performed by Dr. Ken Ohata. Hey, good afternoon, and everyone. And I'm Ken Ohata, and uh, from Tokyo and NTT Medical Center, Tokyo. And uh, today, my assistant is uh, Dr. Minato, and uh, Mr. Shiga is a professional engineer. And uh, today's commentator is a uh, world famous innovator, Professor Yamamoto. <laughs> So, and uh, today's my cases is uh, conic cases. The region is, I think, about four centimeters in diameters. And uh, LST located in the uh, left sigmoid colon. So, the region is uh, hitting uh, behind the our left sigmoid angles. And uh, difficult to see, uh, the difficult to overview whole the forms. So the region is really bit difficult locations. And the, I changed the patient posture uh, to the spine position to make a good gravitational force. The gravitational force is about seven or eight o'clock and the, in the region is about 12 to two or three o'clock. Like this, and so now uh, now now the region is upper side. Yes, in, yes. In relation to the gravity. Yes, mm. and the region is uh, about 15 centimeter from anal barge. So uh, I use this time I use upper GI endoscope, mm -hmm. Olympus two Q 260J, the therapeutic endoscope, because the colonoscope uh, is too much long. Uh, to and it'll be difficult to treat, manipulate. So mm -hmm. the short telescope is convenient for the rectal region or a lower sigmoid colon. Mm -hmm. I prefer to choose like this. Okay. And in addition, the region is uh, hitting back behind the fold. So I'm now deflate to the air to make a uh, rectal sigmoid angle dull, and uh, I can see the oral side of the region. Now I can see mm -hmm. like this. Yes. <laughs> but it'll be difficult to uh, identify the borderline of the anal side. So it'll be difficult. But the difficulty of this region is you can approach to the oral side of the region using only up angle. Yes, yes. So the uh, the the accessory channel comes from the downside of the 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 yes. yeah uh, endoscopic view, yes. so the approaching could be a little bit uh, challenging. Yes, and the approach becomes uh, vertical. Yes, so that is a challenging part of this lesion. Yes, and uh, lateral flex view, uh, I can keep a lateral flex view with this case, but. Uh, in this case, it will be difficult to manipulate or rotate mm -hmm. the scope. So I, uh, I may can use only the forward view mm -hmm. with this case. Yes, if you can use the virtual flex view, then yeah. you can make the tangential approach yeah. and the, uh, the, the lesion comes to the six o'clock and then yeah. uh, it's easier to approach. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, virtual flex position, the maneuverability is Worse. Uh, worse. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, in this case, if I start from the near side, the anal side, the I cut the I make an incision mm -hmm. and uh, cut the muscular mucosa. Mm -hmm. The lesion will move to the oral side. Oral side so yes. in this case, I start the incision from the oral side uh, oral to slide the lesion to the anal side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's start. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the audience or commentators? So, uh, Ohata Sensei. Yes. So, you uh, last year, I think, published your uh, paper with the SU10 
uh, device in terms of the hybrid procedure. Uh, would this be a lesion that you'd consider that, or uh, or you think pure ESD is the only uh, method for this lesion? In this case, the region located uh, will be difficult situation, so not adequate for the hybrid ESD. And uh, re the region is a little bit bigger mm -hmm. for the hybrid ESD. And, uh, and this location, snaring, is very difficult, yeah. I think. So, needle in. So the classical ESD required, I think. Okay. Uh, uh. So now injecting the hyaluronic okay. acid. Needle in. Okay. Uh. So Dr. Ohata used the saline for the first injection and changed to the uh, hyaluronic sodium hyaluronate yes. solution. So the initial injection, I found an adequate uh, injection layer with the saline, and the, f the protrusion became a bluish, clearly, mm -hmm. and yes. changed to the hyaluronic acid solutions. Yes, that is mm -hmm. more secure way. Yes, and needle in. Yeah, once you inject the uh, hyaluronic acid into the muscle layer, that makes the procedure very difficult. So the, uh, at the Open. beginning, I uh, used the yeah. saline mm -hmm. to to separate the muscle uh, from the mucosa. Okay, stop. Then you can okay. use the viscous substance like okay. uh, sodium yeah, hyaluronic yeah. solution. Uh, and I after making a protrusion of the mucosa, uh, Dr. Ohata uh, stick okay. the needle yeah. at the base of the protrusion okay. and extend yes. the um, protrusion yes. to the lateral side. And the needle in and moves the scut of the protrusion and the injection. Mm. Okay. Yeah, very good. Uh, Dr. Ohata? Okay. Need a ring? Yes. Uh, can, you, uh, can you tell us the basic strategy of, the, uh, of this today's case? Uh, with this case? Yes. Uh, the first three, I'll make an uh, end point to the oral side. Enough. And then uh, start from the inner side. Uh, from the inner side and uh, then dissect the lateral side. The lateral side is mm, maybe from the left side, this side, because the, this side is close to the gravitational direction. Mm -hmm. And the right side uh, remain the final. Mm -hmm. Maybe the make an uh, end point and the proximal incision and the uh, left side incision and the final incision is the right side mm -hmm. i think so you uh, you usually uh, make the uh, incision in the, on the end point or on this uh, on uh, this particular case? i make a, i make a in first incision is uh, near side inner side but this case uh, if i cut I make an incision, near side incision, the region will move to the oral side and the, the situation became more difficult. So I cut the most difficult part here, first. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Put the needles and the current supply the power and the cut. And the inflate with the air, the, uh, Lectosymoid angle became sh sharp, uh, so deflate to the air is important. Deflate to the air and um, make lectosigmoid angle dull and make end point. How about the uh, patient position? The spine position. Dr. Ohata? Yes. What's the setting of uh, electrocautery here? Setting of uh, electrocautery? Ah, setting? Yes. Uh, the setting is. Uh, this is end cut. End cut I. End cut. Duration I. 2, effect Sorry. 2, <laughs> interval 2. And the uh, coagulation mode is a forced coagulation. Effect 2 and 45 yes. watts. Yes. 
using bio 3000 300d so 300d i prefer to use this one <laughs> after the injection the region will be moved to the oral side Yes. Okay. After injection to the inner side, then the lesion moved yeah. to the oral side. Yes. And then I will cut the inner side with a carving, like a C, C shaped, like this. And uh, after the initial incision, I use a coagulation mode for the trimming. Dr. Ohata changed the patient's position to the left lateral, and now uh, he, he cut uh, both the oral side and the anal side, and now uh, he's uh, uh, cutting the left side. And this is the probably most, most uh, challenging part, right? Yes. Approaching um, is a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So this is the end point. And uh, this is the uh, uh, entry point. Entry point is uh, previously I demonstrated. Mm -hmm. what, what is the uh, main reason of the changing the patient's posture? Uh, the left side here is very, the, uh, the angulation of the rectal sigmoid mm -hmm. is very tight mm -hmm. with this side. So yes. the rotate the patient position to cut. Mm -hmm. Even change the patient posture, um, still difficult. But I can connect the end point and the uh, So to make point. the approach yes. to the left side of the lesion easier, yes. you change the patient's position, right? Yes. Okay. So now three-quarter incision was done. Yes. Uh, so like what's this. the next step? And the next step, uh, dissect the mainly okay here mm -hmm. so the upper side of the muscle layer and the lower side is the flaps yes and the r to remain the right side mm -hmm. yes okay. it's important for the to keep yes the good traction so now the gravity works very well yes mm -hmm. and uh, in addition uh, after i slipped into the samukosa layer i make a good traction uh, with a transparent attachment f like this. Yes. The submucosal fiber is stretched like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep the good traction to the submucosal fibers and uh, dissect. Yes. And uh, like these pieces, when you see the bases, uh, like this case, uh, I try to go with the coagulation mode. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Supply the power a little bit longer and mm -hmm. uh, move the tips slowly, mm -hmm. and uh, it's possible to dissect with uh, end knives so like this. Very good. And uh, there is no vessel with uh, bitbo, uh, and I cut with end cut mode to make a sharp dissection like this. And when this is the basis, put the coagulation mode a little bit longer and longer. So this is the first coagulation effect yes. too. And 45 watts. Yes. And uh, another key point is, I think, uh, when I, uh, in this case, go right side, I will use a small foils with a uh, middle finger and forefinger. So right and left, no. Yes. Never to use the right hand for the small foils. Use the uh, left hand, only left hand. For the right and the left is important, I think. Yes. To fix the uh, stable operation view, mm -hmm. like this. And go to the left side, I use uh, some for the small, uh, small wheels, like this. Yes. And go to the right side, use a small wheels with a middle finger or four fingers, mm -hmm. ring fingers. Yes. Like this. Yes.
in the colon, uh, there are not so many thick vessels, so in most cases I can stop with uh, end knives like this. And another tip says uh, make a good counter traction with a transparent attachment like this, and start the uh, dissection from the edge is very important, like this. Mm -hmm. Hook the edge tissues and uh, keep a traction and then cut. So, effective uh, dissection will be done. Hook the tissues is important. Ah, okay. Okay. So. This uh, dual knife, dual knife J, or just uh, uh, the dual knife J, but uh, I don't use a water jet function. Uh, I, I okay. only use it. Yeah. So you use uh, hyaluronic acid to keep the yes, yes. elevation yes. and just uh, cut. And uh, okay. here, uh, I think it will be difficult to identify the muscle ray uh, direct, uh, direction. So I this. I add the injection solution, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think a uh, blue stand uh, injection is better to identify the muscle layer or uh, mm -hmm. the backside of the mucosa. Yes. Yeah. So if I didn't pay attention to for the dissection, I sometimes cut the backside of the oh, resected. That, that, that's yeah. that's not very good. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to injure the the specimen. Yes. Uh, for good histopathological examination. Yeah. That is uh, main one of the main reasons to use ASD techniques. Yes. Yes, open. Okay, so you way. have to have a good orientation uh, which way the muscle layer is going. Yes. And sometimes uh, right uh, behind the submucosal tissue could be uh, the specimen yeah. or yes. could be muscle layer. Yes. So you have to have a three-dimensional Orientation. Image, yes. Needling, yes. okay. So this part is uh, maybe the left sigmoid angles. Yes. The muscle layer will curving. Yeah, make a like good curve. Yes. yes. So uh, this Sharp uh, curve. Yes. Sharp. In this part, the careful dissection required. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So uh, use uh, transparent attachment effectively is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can release the right hand like this. Mm -hmm. So I adjust the length of the seesaw with the left hand oh like okay. this. Yes, yes. And uh, adjust the seesaw and then dissect. Yeah, good technique. Yes. And uh, sisu in and uh, make a counter traction with attachment and uh, device. So in this out. kind of situation, you can dissect ni ni close to the muscle layer because the muscle layer is going to the uh, like a downhill. Yes. So you don't, you don't need to worry about cutting the muscle layer. Yes. So close to the muscle layer. Uh, Otherwise, uh, you could burn the s behind the specimen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I almost reached to the end point. Yes. L like this. And uh, I also reach to the end point with this part. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, I will cut the uh, remaining right side mucosa. Oh. 
a little bit difficult. <laughs> but always uh, make a good traction with a uh, uh, attachment is very important. Yes. Yes. So like the this. tip of the attachment is like a, a left hand of the surgeon. Yes. 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 How to make a traction with a uh, uh, transparent attachment and uh, gravity direction, uh, gravitational force, or uh, clip with line or yes, something? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, m make a good, find a good left hand. Yes. It's very important. Right. And uh, in this situation, the right side is sink in the uh, water. So I'll change, change the, the patient posture, posture again, the spine position. And uh, I think the gravitational force will put in the region to the 8 o'clock, or 7 or 8 o'clock with the spine position. So Hata sensei uh, yes. Why um, usually in the submucosal dissection, you mentioned uh, if you see vessels, you use force coag, and if you don't you, uh, see vessels, you use endocut uh, in the submucosal dissection? Uh, if I cut with endocut mode, uh, even in a small basis, uh, it occur bleedings. Yes. So uh, why in the submucosal dissection uh, just not use force coagulation uh, for mo the entire dissection? Uh, why combination endocut and, and force coag? Uh, but uh, I prefer to use the endocut mode mainly because the dissection speed is more quick with the endocut mode. And uh, the endocut mode did not occur the bubbles. The coagulation mode often occurs the bubbles and it will be difficult to identify the muscle layers. So I prefer to use the endocut mode mainly. Only oh. when you see the bases, change the coagulation mode. But uh, without the bases, I use uh, oh. endocut mode mainly. So you use endocut mainly to keep a good endoscopic yes, view. Yes, yes. And so uh, that bubble or yes, smoke. Yes. Uh, and uh, quick. Quick. Yes. And not to. Uh, you don't want. I, I thought you don't want to coagulate the 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 muscle layer or specimen too much uh, uh, uh. because the end cut has a much shallower uh, coagulation effect yeah. than the uh, coagulation mode. But that is not the main reason. Yes, yes. You want to you want to keep the good view and you want to yes. cut quicker. Yes. Oh, I see. I Enduring. understand. And, uh, Does it make sense to everybody? Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so your explanation was good. <laughs> yeah. okay. And uh, in addition, when you see the fat tissues with uh, uh, the coagulation mode, often yes, fog yes, the lens. Yes, yes, yes. Especially yes. in the right side of the colon, colon or a uh, greater curvature of the stomach, stomach uh, many. Yeah. Uh, um, a lot of fat tissue, yes. and if you cut fat tissue with coagulation mode, then uh -huh. it make it co uh, create smokes yes. and make the endoscopic view very very bad. Yes. Oh, so that, that's a good idea. Also can keep a uh, good uh, clear lens. Yes. Yes. So the patient position now changed, uh, and the gravitational force is uh, seven o'clock, and the uh, right side. Mucosa can get a good counter traction. Mm -hmm. So I will cut the remaining normal and mucosa. Uh, I think in addition to that, uh, end cut mode can keep the knife clean too. Yes. No, um, no coagulated tissue yes. on, the, on the knife. So you can keep a good clean knife. Yes. So maybe my impression, so the main reason to use endocut is uh, mm -hmm. speed, speed, quick, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. When you see the bases, use the coagulation mode mm -hmm. like this, but no bases seen, uh, cut with the endocut mode. Uh, Dr. Ohata? Yes. Do you also recommend the same setting for the beginners of ESD? Uh, but actually, my hospital students also doing the same styles. Because uh, 
especially in the colon, there is not so many vessels, so I think it's acceptable, this style. Do you do the same in the stomach? Uh, in the stomach, I prefer to uh, I use more coagulation, coagulation mode, but uh, depend on the location. Mm -hmm. If the region is located in the antrum, there mm -hmm. is no thick vessels or mm -hmm. fat tissues, so I mainly use mm -hmm. the endocard mode. Okay. But uh, in the greater coverage of the stomach, uh, there is a lot of fat tissues, mm -hmm. I mainly use the forced coagulation. Mm -hmm. But fat tissue, you, you, you create smoke. But uh, fat tissue is difficult to, also endocard mode is difficult to cut in. Oh, really? So, mm -hmm. fat tissue... Why uh, don't you try endocard Q? Ah, uh, I've <laughs> never tried. <laughs> <laughs> you can try that. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much and yeah. congratulations for the beautiful procedure. So, yeah.